Mr. Ang Yichen, Mr. So Ita, friends, ladies and gentlemen. First, let me confess, you know, today is Friday night, right? And it's the Friday night before a long weekend. <laughs> I, I, I must first say I'm very surprised to see so many of you here uh, on a Friday night before a long weekend. You know, in our time, this would have been almost impossible to organize. So I don't know what you did to get everyone here, but well done anyway, Yichen. <laughs> First, the next point I want to make is that um, I'm really very, very happy to be back. And the reason why I'm happy to be back is because I'm now at an age where I can look back on my past. And I can tell you, you know, in all sincerity, those were the best days of my life. And what that means then is that if all of you here are not having the best days of your life, you better start worrying, you know because it doesn't get any better after this. <laughs> All right, so just bear that in mind. What I thought I would share with you today is some of my recollections and my journey through NUS and through the Union and reflections on that journey. I entered medical school in 1980. For those of you, this was probably before you were born, right? So let me give you the context of 1980. In 1980 is a time when the government merged Nanyang University with the University of Singapore. So therefore, you notice NUSU as such only existed from September 1980, because prior to that, there were separate unions. 1980 was also the time, I think it was the immediate aftermath of the Soviet invasion of Afghanistan. It was also the time when there was turmoil in Indochina, and in fact, the Vietnamese had invaded, or on the verge of invading Cambodia in order to push the Khmer Rouge out. 1980 was also a time when Singapore was really, in a sense, going at full economic gallop. And we had overcome the 1973 oil crisis as well as some labor problems in the mid-70s. And it was really all systems go. 1980 was also a time when 100% of the MPs in Parliament were PAP MPs. So I'm, sp I'm spelling all this out so that you get some idea of the tone of the times. And at that point in time, if you were an undergraduate, your key objective was to graduate to graduate quickly, to graduate well, get a good job, and take advantage of the economic opportunities that were abounding in Singapore. At the same time, you were aware that things were happening outside Singapore, but that sense of threat, that sense of fear was not really there. So in a sense, we were a bit cocooned, safe and secure in Singapore, and looking for opportunities. So. In 1980, I came in, and uh, fortunately or unfortunately, I was given a scholarship. And, you know, for the, I must confess, for the first three months of my undergraduate days, I actually studied very, very hard. I studied very, very hard because I thought, well, now that I've got a scholarship, I better prove my worth, you know, and what if I don't do as well and PSC strips me of the scholarship? It would be extremely embarrassing. So first three months, first term, I studied very hard. Uh, and basically, therefore, in medical school, studying very hard means you just study and don't do anything else. All right? I, I'm sure it's... Any medical students here, by the way? Ah, one, two, three. Okay, not bad. But you notice they're a minority because all other medical students are studying. <laughs> right. After about three months, I decided there has to be more to life than just studying. And by that time, there had already been tests, and I discovered... In order to get a distinction in medicine, you got to study exponentially hard. But to get a gentleman's C doesn't require all that much work. Will the three medical students here agree with me? Yes? Yes. yes. Okay, good. Now, once I made that discovery, the next point was to make a decision. That I could either go all out and aim for A's and distinctions and therefore work very, very hard. Or I could decide 
that whilst I would collect hopefully a couple of A's along the way, I didn't need to get A's and distinctions in every subject. Once I made that decision, I suddenly found I had a lot of time. And because medical school was so long, in those days, I think it's still today, five years, a medical student who's decided to get C's has got a lot of time, you know. <laughs> so that was a wonderful discovery. Then um, it led to the next thing, what to do with all that time. Now, in those days, I was staying in KE Hall. This was at Sepoy Lines, the old days before we moved over. One of our favorite activities was futsal. You know those machines where you play football? and uh, I mean, it's another wonderful way to waste your time and your life away. <laughs> but one of the persons I met there was a senior, who, a medical student. He was in his fourth year. His name was John Lee, who was, I think he was the vice president, or at least on the exco of the first NUSU uh, council. And he said, look, since, you know, you're so idle and you've got time on your hands. And clearly, based on your past record, you are an activist sort of person. Why not come and get involved with the union? So for lack of anything better to do, I joined. I said, okay, uh, what, what do I need to do? He says, well, get elected. So I said, how do you get elected? He says, well, you know, it's these constituent clubs. And each constituent club has, I think, one seat as an exco member. So why don't you go and stand in the sports club? And guess what? Offered my, put my name up for nomination and no contest. <laughs> so, next moment, this is my second year, 1981, I'm in the Jinsu Exco. Then, next problem, they said, oh, now the council has to elect office bearers. So, everyone looks at each other, no nominations. And the outgoing Exco, the first Exco, said, okay, we're going to uh, get someone to nominate you to be president. I said, I haven't even been in the Exco before. Never mind, we can't get anybody else silly enough to do it. So we're going to nominate you. And guess what? Again, nomination, uncontested. And suddenly, in August 1981, as a second year medical student, I found myself president of the National University of Singapore's Union. Do you see how bad that was? It was a sign of apathy, a sign of lack of interest, a sign that there were many other better things for undergraduates to do at that time than to waste their time in uni activity. So I did not see my election as president in my second year as a novice, as an accomplishment or an achievement. It simply reflected the context and the time at that point. You know, at that phase of our history. Anyway, subsequently, uh, I stood for a second term, and then in my fourth year as an exco member, my fifth year as a council member, ironically through the political association, and I became chairman. But what I was most gratified was that for my second, third, and fourth term, each time I had to fight for a post, there were elections. And to me, that was a healthy sign. Because far from the union being completely irrelevant and uninteresting, now there were people who wanted to get involved, were willing to stand for election, and willing to contest. And that was a positive thing. Now, what else do I remember of that time? Because I said, when I first came in, the problem was inexperience and apathy. And I quickly decided we needed to get more people involved. And one way to do that was to create as many subcommittees as possible. So you see, Yu Chen just came up with a whole list of subcommittees. Very similar to you, we made sure that there was a strong welfare committee, a publication committee. We had committees to organize the union ball. Do you still have the union ball? No. Very sad. You know, those days we had the union ball, and the key highlight of the union ball was to choose the, the freshie queen. You know what Freshie Queen is? The most beautiful girl on campus. And I was not short of male undergraduates volunteering to organize the union ball because they get to pick and choose and hopefully interact with the most pretty undergraduate on campus. We had um, also other subcommittees to embark on publications to provide a voice for students. And I think the newspaper, you know, the Ridge or the Kentridge Voice, in a sense, descends from, from those times. 